Now we get to the fun part. We're going to bring in a little contrast into this image. Now you can get contrast by clicking here and adding a curves adjustment, which we're, we are going to do this, and you can see what happens as the darks are getting darker and the lights are getting lighter. I'll cancel it. But there's a way you can do this similarly the way we did the shadow and highlight filter adjustment, in which the decision can be based more on neighboring pixels. And to do this, I'm going to have to have a layer all of its own to work on. And since I've got this layer dialed down to 82% opacity, I'm going to merge up again. Control Alt Shift E. And I'm going to lock the position of these two layers too. I forgot to do that earlier. And I'm going to call this one Unsharp Mask. And we're going to go up here to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Now, when it first comes up, it's probably going to be set to a very low radius here because normally the Unsharp Mask is used for to add a little crisp edges on things like so it looks crisp on the paper you know and we will be doing this later because in camera raw we had turned off all the sharpening to eliminate any sharpening artifacts the last part of our workflow in Photoshop before we print or put it on the web or whatever is to do a little output sharpening this is a completely different sort of sharpening however because our radius is going to be set very high. In fact, I'm going to use the same 100 pixel radius that we used previously. Now you can see how this actually gives you the contrast, but in a little bit more realistic way than only using the curves, which simply make dark darker and the light pixels lighter. Here it's based on neighboring areas because of this 100 pixel radius, and if you crank up the amount, it'll look pretty fake, and you can see the clipping occurring here in the histogram. As the darks get dark, they clip and same with the highlights. Now, this can look pretty fake if you overdo it. This this looks, it's messed up. So we're not going to use a whole lot of this. In fact, I would recommend something about 50% here. Something around there. 50, 100, and the threshold set to zero. Now, if this looks like nothing happened, look at the preview, the before and after. You can see quite a bit of contrast is has been obtained here. What we're really after is proper contrast in the midtones because don't worry if we get a little bit of clipping here in the highlights and shadows. I'm going to show you next how we can remove any clipping that would occur. But for right now, these midtones are looking so much better that they're popping a little bit. So I'm just going to click OK and let it run its let the filter run. Now you can see here in the histogram that before we had absolutely no clipping. See the little bald patch here and here? And when we show this layer, yes, there is a little bit of clipping here. So little bits in the shadows and highlights are clipping. But there's a way we can eliminate this. Uh, it's kind of ingenious, and it's a often overlooked feature of Photoshop, and that is going up here uh, down to the effects and choosing blending options. And it'll bring up this dialog. Imagine if this was uh, desaturated of all color. If this was a grayscale image, this blend if option down here can actually function as what you could call a virtual mask. If I dial this, this in a little bit, it pokes a hole in this layer to reveal what's underneath. And then to show you, let's go to a let's zoom in to a dark area like this uh, chair right here and move this in and see this banding that's occurring what's happening is the moment this layer is above this value whatever it is 32 I've got it set then it pokes a hole in this layer allowing you to see what's underneath now if I if if I was to hide these layers and run this effect and move it in you can see how it's indeed punching a hole. And it's an all-or-nothing affair. The moment one pixel no longer satisfies the requirement here, then it becomes transparent and lets you see what's underneath. Well, let me cancel that because I need to see all the layers as we run it. And I need to be able to see everything also. 
in this image. So we're going to run the blending option now and we'll move to prevent any clipping I'm going to move this into five just five short of total clipping and on the highlights instead of 255 I'm going to move it into 250. Now these little sliders here are actually two sliders that are hooked to each other and we can, if we unhook them by holding the Alt key or Option on a Mac, I can click on the inner one here and drag it away, and also on the inner one here on the highlights and drag it away. Now, the farther the distance here causes you to have a smoother transition, so it's not you don't get that banding around the darks. But the real value in it here is you can edit your image now in a visual sort of way where you just move this until it looks right. And if you look up at the image while I'm moving this thing, uh, I can introduce just the amount of contrast I want into the darks. You want to keep a little distance between this so it's a smooth effect, but no use, no need to bring it all the way up to, to mid-tone gray, because I, theoretically I could put that on 128 and this on 128, and it would be a perfect bell curve of the mid-tones getting the effect and then a linear drop-off to the edge. But here, here I'm just going to edit this so that visually it looks good. And also I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer and let a little show through. If you get a problem area, you can base your decision on, like I seem to be having a little problem. It's looking a little funny around her eyes right here. So see how we're getting, so I can, I can let that be my decision. I, I don't want that kind of weirdness, so I'll leave it about like that. And same with the highlights. You leave a, a little bit of distance, but not too much, and you'll get, let's look up here in the, this seems to be the telltale area. Here are these highlights here, which were tendency to have clipping. See how you get, if it's too close, we get this weird halo, because the banding is occurring, because where it's poking a hole through this layer and showing the one underneath. So if I can put that distance apart a little bit, see how it feathers it? and it's a it's a believable effect so that's the power of the blending option now you can use the blend if on this layer or the underlying layer whichever one is like your reference layer that you want to apply it that you want to base your decisions on so logically since this is the layer that I'd altered that that's having the clipping I want to base my decisions on this layer anyway uh, often overlooked feature of Photoshop, the blending options. You use this in conjunction with the unsharp mask, like we're doing right here, and it's a great way to bring contrast into your image in a believable way. You can also drop the opacity a little bit. There's before, and there's after. And you don't need to overdo it here, because I'm still going to let the uh, curves adjustment pick up part of the load. Ideally, you can use this unsharp mask technique based on the 100 pixel radius to achieve some of the contrast but not all of it or else it can start to look a little bit fake and we'll let the curves pick up some of the load and between the two of them we'll have our image in perfect contrast so this is a great thing here with the slider though you just move it until it looks right maybe back off a, off a little bit and I'm I'm pretty happy with this I'll let the curves take it from here Next up is going to be the color adjustment layers of curves, levels, and hue and saturation.